Good day guys, Austin here and in this video today we're going to be going for the Sega Game Gear. Now what a little beauty this is. Um, for those of you who don't know, which I suppose would be no one, <laughs> the Sega Game Gear was a very popular handheld um, well, console I suppose you put it as. Now this was released in about 1990, 1991 or something like that depending on what country you're in and it was the main competition for the Game Boy. Now we all know about the Game Boy and the kind of pulling power that little handheld had because to be honest it captivated the market and Sega had an uphill battle to try and um, wean people over from Game Boy to the Game Gear. Now Game Gear had its flaws it was basically uh, it was it was rather large compared to the Game Boy but what I did have was a color screen which was also backlit because the main flaw on the Game Boy was the fact that it was only green screen and if you had any kind of cloud cover or the light was switched off in a room you couldn't see anything it had to be very well lit to be in order to play it so the Game Gear tackled that by giving you a, a a nice colour screen to be honest and it was something that had never been done before now it did have its flaws like I was saying it <laughs> because of the technology it was using and because it was kind of groundbreaking the battery life oh my god it was portable but you needed a plug socket to be honest because if you put batteries into this you would be asking your mum and dad every day for a new set of batteries and back in 1990 1991 batteries were not cheap <laughs> Yes, you can go for the rechargeable, but I wasn't even lucky enough to have them, to be honest. I had to save up my little pocket money, and I got myself a little in-the-wall plug socket thing. AC adapter, that's it. Now, the game catalogue a very extensive for the Game Gear. I mean, it ran for, what, five, six years or something? I think it finally gave up the ghost in about 1997. Um, and the games were very good indeed. Um, the monitor was small, but look at the competition it had I mean it, you could even plug in and this was groundbreaking the TV antenna tuner for terrestrial TV <laughs> with a little antenna on top amazing absolutely amazing and again groundbreaking but anyway enough of the little history class let's actually get stuck in and set up this little bundle of joy because I'm excited very excited okay then as always go to the description below there you will find more than likely a mega link now, hop along over to that mega link. You will find a file within the. If you are having any trouble downloading that file, it's not because it's broken. It's because your browser is incompatible. You either have to switch browser, get a plugin, or Google to try and fix it. Because Mega is doing a transition to try and bring it up to 2015, which we should all be doing, to be honest. So you know, I can't help you with that. Do a bit of googling, guys. So enough of that. Once you have downloaded that file, you will have something similar to this on your desktop. The Game Gear Pack. Now it's a 7 zip file, which means that it's compressed. So what we need to do is uncompress, decompress, or want for a better word, extract it to wherever you want these files to be. So for now, I'm going to extract these to my desktop. Um, do, 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 using the 7 zip program, because I, that's the one I use to compress it. So, common sense dictates that I use the same program to actually uh, do that, to extract it. Bit of a brain fart. Okay then, so while that's taking place, what I need you to do is go to your hyperspin setup. I'm still using the one on the external hard drive, the one that I set up for a demo. Here we go. So in there you will see the hyperspin setup 1.4 and the rocket launcher setup, both in alternate folders. Okay, so once that's extracted, open it up and you will see a folder structure similar to this, if not identical. Okay, so we've got the hyperspin files, we've got the rocket launcher and hyper launch files, and we've got a test game that I also included, just to give you the ease of the setup. Now, very important, there is a very special gift within the readme file. Please, please, for the love of God, for the love of games, for God's sake, read the readme file. It's full of bountiful information. It was put together by scholars in the 17th to 18th century, I, I presume, and their words are gospel. Now, 
not only are the words gospel, but it also introduces something else into your life. I can't go on it too much, but trust me, read the README file and you will be bewildered with magical gifts bestowed upon you. <laughs> okay, so we've covered that enough. It's important to read, let's put it that way. Um, so, the more important things, right? We've got our hyper launch files and we've got our hyper launch? Yeah, hyper launch and rocket launch files and we've got our hyper spin files. So first of all, let's deal with our hyper spin files because they're probably going to take longer to bring on over. Okay, so as always, we've got the database folder and we've got the media folder. If we then go over to our hyper spin, you will also see database folders and media folder. So, common sense dictates that if I was to drag these two folders, which I am going to do, over into the hyperspin setup, those folders will become one. They will merge. And it will ask me, do I want to replace all the files and folders within the destination? At which case, I will say yes. Please do so. Common courtesy to say please as well in that kind of situation. Ah, this is the benefits of having a uh, external hard drive. <laughs> the long copy time. Um, okay, come out of there then. Everything's passed over to that place. Now we'll look at our rocket launcher folders. So, okay, so within here in the rocket launcher and hyper launch files, you will see a media folder. Also within the rocket launcher setup, you will see a media folder. What I need you to do is drag that bad boy over and it will ask the same thing again. 409 files, would you like to replace the ones at the destination? Yes please, kind sir. Yes please. Okay, that for now is everything to do with our setup. We've dragged everything over and included in there is, okay, we've got the theme, which is the PAL variant. Because I'm a PAL user, my apologies for those US amongst you, but I'm a PAL user and I also like the, the design of the PAL version rather than the US version. So we've got the PAL themes mo both main and default. We've got the box art, we've got the cart art, we've got wheels, we've got fade, we've got bezels, and we've got anything else that I can't remember off the top of my head. Databases, I don't know. Um, everything's included there to get you set up, obviously apart from the games and the videos because I can't give you those. Um, right, so let's get, actually get this set up. As always then, first port of call. We'll go to a hyperspin setup and if you've been following my little uh, tutorials, you will see in there you've got the rocket launcher EXE shortcut already in there. What I need you to do now is launch this up. It'll probably ask me to do I want to update, in which case I'll say no, because I don't want to update at this stage. I'm not showing you how to update. I'm showing you how to install Game Gear. So no to that. Of course, use your own discretion. Feel free to update if you wish. <laughs> right then, what we need to do is first of all, sort out the emulator. Right. There is various emulators that you can use for this setup. However, because we've already done it, and if you've been following my guides, by the way, um, you will more than likely already have a RetroArch set up on your uh, setup. Um, that's what I'm going to be using for today. If you haven't got it set up already, um, look in the description below and there's a full guide and tutorial as to how to set that up. I encourage you, I implore you, if you haven't done so already, please set RetroArch up because it is amazing little emulator. My tutorial is a little bit outdated, I do need to update that very soon. However, even the, the backdated version, it still runs everything, it runs everything flawlessly. Um, so yeah, enough about that. First off though, go to your global tab, go to your emulators tab, scroll down, find RetroArch and just make sure that it is set up correctly, in which case it will have no exclamation mark next to it. If you were to double click on it, it would bring you up, you have no red boxes and everything looks standard and tickety boo. Okay, I'm confident that RetroArch is now set up on this system. This is the first time I've done this by the way on here, so I've got no idea whether this is going to run or not. Um, okay, next thing we need to do then is go to our Game Gear. As you can see it's already set up as default so we don't need to input it in. As you can see my ROM path was already put in there for a previous install so what I'm going to do is get rid of that. You will be greeted with more than likely a blank box here in which case you'll press the green button, the green plus sign, uh, find wherever your ROMs are. Again I've included one for you on your behalf. I just extracted one for a demo, so let's hope it's still there. Uh, where did I put it? It's probably in here, isn't it? Game Gear. Test game. 
Or at least the learner. Got no idea what game it is. And then you need to set your default emulator to whatever you want to use. Again, I'm going to be using RetroArch because it's the one I like. Okay then, default emulator, ROM path is set. Of course, yours will be wherever your ROMs are. I, I don't know where you put your ROMs, so your path will be completely different. But wherever all your game, game games are, set that to wherever the folder is. Default emulator is set. Okay then, uh, general settings. Not general settings, my apologies. Um, settings itself, at the top. First things we need to do then is, in the 7-zip or the compression um, section, what you need to do is figure out whether your games are compressed or uncompressed. So if they're compressed, they're more than likely going to be either 7-zip, RAR or ZIP format. If they're not, and they're more than likely going to be .gg, in other words, Game Gear format, then obviously you put false. If they are compressed, then you put true. Easy as that. If you are having difficulties launching, then the first thing I always change is this, just to make sure that the emulator requires either compressed or uncompressed games. Okay then, so that's that covered. Next thing we need to do then is sort out the bezel. Because this uh, console was released on a, well, basically it was a tiny screen, I think it had something like 200 by 160 pixels, which you know, back then was groundbreaking. But now, when I play this on a 55-inch 4K TV, it looks a little bit pixelated to say the least. So you more than likely will desire a bezel to be used for this uh, system. So what we want to be using here is true. Mine's already set to true, which is tickety boo. So we're all good there. Where I do need to sort out is the bezel situation. So I'm going to come out of here. Now the bezel as standard depending on how you set up your rocket launcher can conflict in um, RetroArch. So if you've got RetroArch running then I implore you to follow these steps. Okay, so we've gone into our rocket launcher folder, I want to go into the media folder, I then want to go into the bezels folder and then find wherever Sega Game Gear is, Sega Game Gear there. Okay, in the default folder, which is the one that it will also always use as a bezel, you will find uh, some files and folders, well, some files more than likely, uh, something that resembles this, a picture and an any file to go with it. I think it's an any file, is it an any file? I'm sure it is. Yeah, an any file. And basically that's the bezel or the outward it's going to use for the bezel, and that's the coordinates that it sets up for the emulator to show the screen within the bezel. Now, certain bezels from certain other people are causing conflicts when you load it up with RetroArch. So I implore you to make another folder within here. New folder. Rename that to whatever you want. For example, backup. And every other bezel that was already in here, i.e. every other bezel that hasn't got the name Bezel Game Gear, or the any file that goes with it, Bezel Game Gear, named exactly the same as this. Any files that are not exactly the same as those two, put in that backup folder. Because basically I want you to have a test bed to get this up and running. And if you've got any other bezels that are using any other format other than that, then they will cause conflict and you may not be able to launch the system. Once you have got it up and running and you know it's working, then have a mess around with the bezels and test others to suit your purposes, your tastes and so on and so forth. But for now, please, I implore you, just use this set of bezel, well, this bezel, to uh, for the test purposes, just so we can get it up and running. Okay then, that's enough covered for that. Mine's already set up and ready to rumble. Um, let's come out of here, just to get back to the normal. Hype spin. Okay, let's get back to Rocket Launcher UI. Okay, we've got the game gear. We've got it set up for games. We've got the emulator selected. We've set it up so it uses compressed format and I've selected it to use a bezel. Hopefully now, by the gods of Game Gears, this will now run. So, when I go to my tab and I uh, audit the system, hopefully it will find, yes it has, one game, the one that I included, Adam's Family. What a gift to bestow upon you. <laughs> one of 259. <laughs> okay, so let's actually give this a test and see if it works. It's the first time I've run it on this system, so I've got no idea. Uh, let's go. Let's dance with the devil in the pale moonlight. Loading complete. Again, 
tweak your um, phase greens, whatever you want, as much as you want. Okay, and there we go. It's working. Right, something that we need to do at this stage. Oh, I've got this monkey keyboard again. Is press F1. So I have to... There we go. It's stupid the way I have to press F1 on this keyboard. Right, if you can see, which I can't at this moment in time, I need to navigate to the settings file. So, on here, I need to uh, press the arrow keys, basically navigate up and down, and the X is to select something, and Z is not to select something. If you can see, which I can't, you need to go down to, I believe it's settings. <laughs> Hopefully I can navigate in this. I need to go to video settings, which is I think the third one down. And then custom ratio, which luckily is the top one, and press X on that. Now what I can do is get the screen to fit the bezel. Exceptional work, isn't it? Exceptional. Come on. Okay, I'm only going to do it roughly for this. It's only an example to show you that we can get it to fit the bezel. Press X again, then we can do the right hand side on the bottom. Again, you can take your time on this as much as you want. Press X again to keep that. Now what I need you to do is press Z to come out. Uh, Z to come out again. And now what we need to start doing is First off, if you want to use any shaders or video overlays or anything like that, go into settings and there's your shader options. Basically, choose whatever shaders you want to use for the system to try and replicate either very good graphics to transform this into a, I don't know, modern day computer or go retro on it and use like the, I don't know, the Game Gear LCD screen or something like that to make it look like it did back in the day. So we'll come out of there. Next thing you need to do is set the controls. I believe the controls are actually already set up, but you know, you know how to do this. I've taught you all this in the Retro Arch install video, to be honest. So there's not much need to cover any of this. But please remember, once you've set everything that you want to do it and you've got everything configured the way you like it, you will have to save the config. So scroll down to here, press the X button. It will give you a little yellow notification saying that it saved it. However, like I explained in the Retro Arch video, you will have to rename that save config into the name of the system. Please, I implore you, if you haven't done so already, watch the RetroArch video and it will talk you through how to do that. It sounds more complicated than what it is. Okay then, so once you've got it all set up, that's it. You're good to go. So now I can actually exit out of the system. I know that everything's now working. The game can run from Rocket Launcher. We've set up the game to work. Now what we need to do is translate this working game into our hyperspin setup so it all looks nice. Okay, that's first off. Get out of it because I don't need this anymore. It's all up and running. So the way we control it in Hyperspin is through Hyper HQ. Hyper HQ. Okay, clicking on Hyper HQ will bring you to a screen similar, if not identical, to this one. First things we need to do then is go onto the Wheel Settings tab. Within the Wheel Settings tab, you will find a little drop down box such as this. Scroll down to your Sega Game Gear, which will be set up as default, hopefully. And as you can see, for some crazy reason, I've already got mine kind of set up. So, follow my lead on this one if you haven't done so already. Yours will more than likely be blank. But, you want the execution to be hyper launch. You want the PC game to be disabled. This should be left blank, more than likely. ROM path, this is where, again, Wherever, whichever folder contains all your games, the one that you just pointed Rocket Launcher to. So in my case it will be Game Gear Pack, because I want to do that demo game again. Um, test game. Okay. Parameters left blank if you're running my kind of setup. And extensions. Okay. This will be dictated to by whatever file formats you have your games in. Now if they're compressed, obviously it will come in 7-zip RAR or ZIP kind of format, so I can put them in because I know that mine are compressed. So the way I do this for more than one file format is 7-ZIP, comma, no spaces whatsoever, RAR, comma, no spaces whatsoever, and ZIP. Again, no spaces anywhere in all of these settings. Um, and also, just in case I do use a, a raw file and then it can find it, I also want to put GG in there because that's the most common found um, Game Gear ROM types for all my games that I own. <laughs> okay, 
so that's now set up. Next, go on to the wheel tab or the wheel tab, depending on how you like to pronounce it. Now, I like to, again, choose your setup to about here, but when the wheel becomes uh, static, I like it to disappear completely. So it shows my car art and my box art to its entirety, in its full glory. So what I need to do now is, I like it also to be vertical instead of the normal curved wheel. I like it to be completely vertical. I also like mine to be 400. I like it to be 240 here. I like it to stay animated and everything else can stay default. Um, in the navigation of themes, I like to tick my ROMs only. I like to tick my wheels only. I do like it to return to the last game so it knows what I've been playing last. And it doesn't always return to the beginning each time I go to the system because then you always end up playing the games that begin with A or Z. <laughs> um, okay, I do like it to do that as per normal or standard, I believe it is. And I like to tick this box which removes text field info uh, in here. Now, as I've stated, I did not supply you with videos, I never do. I haven't got the bandwidth to upload that kind of file size, to be honest guys, my apologies. But to be honest, it's taking people's livelihoods away from them. Places you can get these then is MU Movies. Of course, you can use Hypersync, download all the videos you want. You can do them one by one from MU Movies if you wish. You can also go into YouTube and download them for free from all the different games that you've got. You can also download them from torrent files online from all the reputable torrent websites if there are any. Um, you can download them from various other websites that also do this kind of stuff. I don't know. Get them from wherever you want, but I can't supply these for you. My apologies, guys. It's one of the few things I can't really supply. Um, sounds. Oh yeah, once you have got them, put them in a folder and point this towards it. <laughs> okay, the next thing then, sounds. Um, I implore you to untick this box because it grinds me every time I see somebody's demo on YouTube or online or something they always seem to have this enabled and it grinds me it's so furious it's annoying as anything listening to all them sound effects uh, special art then okay if you have a 360 pad follow the lead and change these now if you haven't got a 360 pad leave as default because they're very good well, as default, but if you have got a 360 pad, please untick all boxes apart from special artwork B. In the X bit, uh, in the X box, in the X box, uh, change that to 500. In the Y box, change that to 384. In this, change it to 1, I believe it's already 1 as default, but in the out, also change that to 1. I need it to display for 3 seconds and I need to go away for 3 seconds. If you've got a 360 pad, they're the only boxes you need to change. If you haven't, again, leave as default. Now leave this as fade and leave that to none. And that is it. That is now everything set up in Hyperspin and it should be working no problem whatsoever. So just as a test, what I want to do is... What do I want to do? Oh yeah, mine will run in windowed mode to show you the full extent of the actual, um, what's it called? To show you the full extent of the theme, <laughs> Jesus, brain farts today. I want to enable full screen because it will only show you in a compressed 4 by 3 windowed mode. And you won't see it in its full glory, and I need that. Okay, so now that's done, hopefully I can click X on here. And hopefully I can go down to hyperspin and it will launch and everything will be working as intended. Please gods of Game Gears, please grant me with your bountiful gifts today. I pray to you every day. Let's go in here, Game Gear up and running and boom! There you go, there's the theme that I bestowed upon you. I made this theme by the way guys. Go inside. And as you can see, I've given you all the box art, even though all it's showing because I asked it to show only the um, boxes that I've got and for the games I've got and the carts for the games that I've got. Um, and the wheels, of course. So yes, you will have all the wheels, you'll have all the boxes and carts and stuff, but it's only showing me these for the time being. Now, where it says add-ons, there's add-ons? <laughs> where it says 1994, Flying Edge, Adam's Family, the, or depending on how you read it, the Adams family. Um, use my tips and tricks video 2015 and that will show you how to transform that 
into a f font and format which suits this theme and looks good because at the moment in time it's misplaced in the theme and it looks out of place should we say because it's wrong colors wrong fonts and all that kind of stuff and again download the videos from wherever you want and they will then display and obviously that video at the bottom as we talked about we uh, changed to the 360 buttons that are highlighted at the bottom and that's it that's everything set up for Game Gear again tweak this to your own taste do whatever you want I've given you the starting block it's up to you to run the race <laughs> okay then so let's get out of here and that's the Game Gear mission complete guys mission complete well done we've gone through it we've climbed Mount Game Gear together we've got to the top and we've planted our little Sega flag it's flapping in the wind I can feel it I can feel the wind in my face uh, well done that's another system knocked down and well some more to go look forward in the future because I'm going to be smashing out the Amiga very soon basically my computer is going through a bit of a ringer again at the moment so I'm well I'm setting up another computer which is this one at the moment um, look forward to some more live feeds I will be showing them off uh, very soon including you know setups talking you through various things helping you guys out if anyone wants to join me on a live feed I'm more than happy to you know get involved with Skype or anything like that I don't know never done that thing before it's exciting it's a new venture that I'm proud to bestow upon you and of course as always the uh, generic don't buy drives or computers off other people especially ones online in the bedrooms offering a warranty and all kinds of services which is <laughs> from a guy on a YouTube channel or from a website this honest to God save your money don't buy the drives they do not work first of all you'd end up spending more money than what you would have had to in the first place <laughs> you're paying for a warranty which would come as standard on you know a reputable company's website and then just build your own and put your own hard drive in it cheapest chips guys easy as muck okay I'm not gonna harp on about it anymore thank you guys as always please 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 subscribe first of all and also and like this video you know it gets the word out but more than anything in the entire world please share share this bountiful video throughout the world let everybody embrace Game Gear together and we'll all sing happy Sonic songs together <laughs> okay then guys I'm going because my brains getting all flustered right now thank you very much and you guys have a good day laters